At the 2021 Tour of Britain, I was team mechanic for Swift Carbon Pro Cycling, uh, sharing the role with Robin. Coming up is some in-car footage uh, that was recorded on a dash cam that I just placed in the car um, and to be honest I completely forgot about it so I thought I should collect all these videos together and make a little insight as to what it looks like when inside the team car. And the official start is given at 10.51am. Good luck everyone. Loads of big name riders from the World Tour take part. Uh, here you see Mark Cavendish. There's Pete Williams, won many a jersey over the years. Wout Van Aert, never heard of him. Julian Alphilippe, ex-world champion. Nico Delamini, South African star. And uh, being kept informed of the time gap, the latest advantage is 4 minutes 25. Pete Williams DSing for us at Swift Carbon in 2021. Carbon for feeding in the peloton, please. Swift Carbon. Basically, there is the race radio um, calling for Swift Carbon feeding in the peloton. Um, we're team car number two, so it's no sweat for us. The race commentary you can hear in the background is the regular TV coverage, and it helps us pick up things that might not be mentioned on race radio or that we can spot our own riders within the peloton. See where everyone is. It's always fun going past schools. The sport is always top notch. And then within the convoy of cars, you have your position, which is based on the general classification of where your riders are. Ours of this day was number 13. Swift Carbon, your riders still calling for drinks in the peloton, please. It's super hard to get from position in the convoy to the back of the peloton to search your riders. And drinks for Swift Carbon uh, for the break, please. Drinks for Swift Carbon break. Uh, they said break there, so that's our call to go up to the rider who we have in the breakaway. Because we've been called up, we get to come out of position and come up to the back of the uh, breakaway. Just to check it's okay with the commissaire and inform the rider that you're there ready. Once you finish servicing the rider, you drop back into position, and the other cars who are ahead of you in the convoy will come round you. Casual car when I uh, did that corner, I went that van was parked out. I didn't say, I was looking at the van. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm going to commit. You actually know he's in front, it was his fault. <laughs> Pete here was a bit worried about how close he was to uh, another team car uh, in the convoy, and a van on the side of the road it does get a bit cl close sometimes. Come on, Ross, where are you? This road's rapid. Support over the top of the climbs is always good. Uh, congregation point. Everyone there uh, comes out to see the riders going a bit slower than they normally go past. Lots of work goes on between Team Car 1 and Team Car 2 to make sure equipment and the riders require is on the car that's with each rider so obviously if someone's in the breakaway they need their bike on top of that car um, and also trying to keep on top of where riders are within the race uh, especially if it's been blown to pieces. 
when the team cars out of radio signal between each other uh, we use voice notes on whatsapp so that the signal is not always so great when you're out in the sticks so uh, th- at least you can rely on that message being delivered so my driver's door How you doing mate? You well? Yeah, not bad. Rolly's just out for a casual ride by the sound of it. Right, just keep eating and drinking loads. Yeah? Got a big gap here, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got one. Great Britain crash, Great Britain in the peloton, Great Britain. That's the announcement no team car wants to hear. Um, here I could see behind us was the Team GB car, so I let Pete know just so that he knew that it would come swinging past. There it goes. Um, yeah, it's always handy to be an extra pair of eyes for the driver. They've got so much to concentrate on. By watching the TV coverage, I was able to let Pete know that around this corner was where the crash had happened. That's on this corner. Watching for parked cars at uh, kilometre 173.8. Parked cars on the right, kilometre 173.8. Oh, it's getting the suit. There's a whole lot of flesh on the show. Dudley, Ethan Vernon come down, and let's just say his skin suit wasn't doing what it's supposed to do anymore. Loads of people out in this town, it's really nice to see everyone out. Best crowds I ever saw was at the tour of Yorkshire, it's just, just people the whole way along the route, it's insane. Start the peloton please, Bobby start. And quick step as well please, quick step, road narrows the peloton, road narrows. Quick step, service, front wheel for 13 please, front wheel for 13. Just give us a call again lads. You can't move out of position in the convoy uh, until your rider has called you up, so they have to put their hand up. So the commissaire will call you uh, over the radio so that you can move up. Swift carbon, swift carbon for feeding in the peloton, please. The commissaire's uh, seen that riders put a hand up, so there was the call that you can move up from the front of the convoy. Ollie, just drop back in, uh, drop back towards the cars, mate. Sometimes it's too busy at the back of the peloton, uh, especially sort of in a calm part of the race. So you call your rider to just drop back a little bit, and just so you can service them. Yeah, and go in. They're Asking Ollie to go to the right so he can be serviced by the DS, but that message obviously didn't come through. So it looks like I'm Sometimes it can be carnage for the riders coming through the convoy, so their best bet is just to shout just to raise awareness where they are. The team cars will also use horns to let other team cars know that there's riders coming through. <laughs> Clip is from our uh, course recce we did before the team time trial. On the race, I was sat in the back of the car and ready for if anything was to happen. The mechanics evenings are often super busy, uh, hence why there's not so much video footage anymore, but there's a few photos coming up um, just to give you an idea of what, what goes on. Here you can see one of the time trial bikes uh, just 
got it on the jig just to check that it's going to pass uh, the UCI um, scrutineering before the time trial and regulations that the um, the reach of the cockpit, the angle of the bars, the how far forward the saddle can be, the angle of the saddle, uh, is a lot to think about and um, actually in uh, last end of last year they announced a change to those rules so now there's three sets of rules depending on the rider's height that they're allowed to uh, have the bike set up as. Sometimes equipment gets used that's not uh, approved by a sponsor so this year we were sponsored by Continental uh, but this disc wheel had a Vittoria tyre glued to it so it had to be edited. Mechanics spend a lot of time putting bikes on and off turbos, shifting turbos around to positions for them to warm up and warm down and it's just part of the job. After all the bikes have been serviced and prepped, uh, it's onto the vehicles so it's got to look clean and tidy. Can't be going around looking so dirty and horrible as it's the advert for the team. Lucky for us, uh, one evening uh, my uncle wasn't too far away so we managed to rope him in for cleaning the vehicles, which is always handy. Saves a bit of time, might get to bed a bit earlier that night. Feels a bit silly washing the bikes in the rain, but hey, uh, I mean basically after they've been washed we take them under the awning and give them a, an air down on, from the airline, and make sure they're nice and dry and then cleaned up. Same again, more uh, washing of vehicles in the rain, seems silly but it's got to be done. The thing we always do is put the bikes in number order, um, made me laugh because I found out the other day that a few of the riders never actually noticed that we'd done that, they obviously just looked for their number, but hey, hey it's, uh, it's good for the soul knowing that all the numbers are in the correct order. <laughs>